Hi, I'm Dennis Gage. Thanks for tuning in to my classic car. I'm a certified car nut. Well, this week we're in Morris, Illinois for the 100 car pileup. And let me tell you, this show is one of a kind. Whether you call them rat rods, resto rods, or jalopies, they're a throwback to another time, and it's all about the machine. You're not gonna see a lot of shiny paint jobs at this show, but it's gonna be a wild ride. Let's roll. Hey, Mike. How you doing, Mr. Gage? <laughs> Mr. Gage, what is this formality? <laughs> you're, so, you're so proper, I must say. <laughs> Man, what a pileup. Yeah, it's something, ain't it? Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's something all right, dude. So how did this, I mean, how did this get started? This is a this is a bizarre event. About six years ago, a bunch of guys in Chicago uh, were on the internet and we were chatting and we decided that since there, there were mostly street rod shows in the area, we decided that we would get together and create a traditional hot rod show. And, so, and that's what you consider the pileup. It's a, it's a tra traditional hot rod show. Traditional hot rods and customs. That's what, yeah. we, that's what we bill it as. Because of that, you have you know certain criteria that let you in the gate or keep you out of the gate. Correct. What, 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 is, what is that? We have a, a list of rules. There's 12 or 13 of them uh, that we try to go by. Um, no stock OEM appearing cars. If you've got a you know off the showroom floor car that looks like it's never been modified or customized. It doesn't belong here. doesn't belong here. So at least put on some hubcaps or something, huh? Yeah, lower it, do, do something. Do something. Yeah. <laughs> we try to use speed parts uh, from the 50s and uh, building methods, you know, the same as they did back in the 50s and the early 60s. There are no judges, there's no trophies, there's yeah. no competition whatsoever. It's a, a chance for guys to come and show the things that they've been working on for the last year or so and talk about them. It's really a subculture of its own, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's, I mean. The, well, the thing is, it's is that, a lifestyle. Yeah. I would say it's a it's a lifestyle. <laughs> yeah. The the thing really is, is that the uh, uh, the street rod scene, you know, it's usually an older crowd, and they're more established, and they spend a lot of time and money on their cars. Where the traditional hot rod scene is a, a younger crowd, who you know, these guys really don't have a lot of money to spend on their cars, so well, they build them with what they can. That's how you know. hot riding started. Exactly, you know and that's, that's the that's whole exactly point. Exactly, yeah. yeah. You that's know, what they did back in the 50s They weren't and early doing 50,000 dollar paint right, jobs back right, then. Exactly. They were pulling stuff out of junkyards right. and you know making them go fast. Yeah, and that's what we do. And because of the, the scene is so young, you know, the music is associated with the scene, so we like to have a lot of like rockabilly and garage rock bands and things like yeah. that. And you know, it's it sort of fits the crowd. It's a big party, isn't it? Yeah, it can be. <laughs> yeah, 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 it can be. <laughs> it turns into a party, you know. But it's almost a word of mouth thing. Well, I interestingly enough, this group is also connected word of mouth by the internet. Yes, yeah. That's, and that's, that's the young part of it. Yeah, yeah. 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 And and the, the, this whole this this group, the hand. The, the, we we met on this uh, message board. Uh, it's on jalopyjournal.com called the ham, and uh, which stands for hokey blank message board. <laughs> <laughs> that's a B. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's an A, a with three there. letters in there. Yeah. Uh, and and that's and that. That's how you guys are connected, and through this kind of internet word of mouth, this thing's grown to several hundred cars. Right, yeah. How many cars do you think you have here? Uh, well, a little over a thousand. I, would I mean, that's, a, that's amazing, man. Yeah. That is amazing. People come to the pileup to sit back and relax and have a good time, and it's it's fun all around. Well, let's what do you say? Let's partake of that good time. Let's what do, do that. Let's go, man. All righty. Welcome back to my classic car. Well, Kirk, this is a pretty wild machine. Um, I don't know what to call it. <laughs> We're gonna call it a hot rod. We're gonna call it a hot rod. Yes, we are. <laughs> well, this uh, you built this. I love the story about this. It actually started with the these killer headlight buckets, yep, right? Yeah, it really did. I just started with uh, cutting and grinding with uh, this little shop I have at home, and I started with that little headlight bracket. And then I figured maybe I should start on the chassis. Maybe so. Maybe I, so. I, I kind of backed so, up yeah. and got it into a chassis. But you've it. built this thing kind of on a budget. I mean, you were saying oh, yeah, you built absolutely. the whole thing out of scrap, basically. It's a uh, salvage yard, junkyards, eBay. <laughs> Very few new parts. Um, I had uh, Hot Rod Custom and Supply in Shelbyville, Michigan, did the motor. Uh -huh. they did a, they, I did this have the motor rebuilt. Nice flathead. And yep. Um, there again, just is I, the front end a, a uh, is that a tractor? It's a tractor. Yeah, is it Oliver uh, or nope? It's, a, it's uh, the best of my knowledge. I'm not a tractor guy, but I, I 
I believe it's an international. The Farmall, all right. The, yep. and, and your flying anvil? Flying <laughs> anvil is just, a, I wanted to, you know, put something fun on there. And uh, when I saw it, I knew that was it. Well, I like, you know, all the all the metal work in here. I mean, and this is all this is all scrap metal too? You bet. Yep, everything in here, this uh, this decorative aluminum plate, it was, uh, I bought it at a local scrap yard. Yeah? Um, the reason it was at the scrap yard is it's, it's been anodized and it got wet. So each sheet had a big black stain. Uh -huh. for it. So I just worked around all of it and uh, yeah, it was like six bucks a sheet, you know? <laughs> there again, most of the seats are, are scrap metal. The decorative pieces on the side are made out of old stop signs. <laughs> Turned around, if I were, I should have probably left it. It might have been kind of cool, but uh, those are just some old street signs I had there. Again, wow. it's all budget minded. I, I just really don't have a lot of money and I have a lot of time. Yeah. But, but, uh, but you know, I, I just kind of wanted to try to do it on a budget just to see I if it could be done. So, you you know, know, I've been watching people. There's been a crowd around this all day. Uh, people just are, they're, they're drawn to this. And what a wild rear end. Can you drop it down? Oh, absolutely, you? sure. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's wild. You're sitting on, on the ground. Sits right on the rockers, yeah. Man, you do great work. Well, thank you. got you. a good eye. Thanks. It's Thanks for fun. bringing it to the pileup. Thanks, man. appreciate it. <laughs> man, yeah. top of the heap on the pileup. Welcome back to My Classic Car. Well, Brock, this is this is a very cool car. I love this car. Thanks a lot. But the coolest thing about it is is you basically built it. You're what, how old are you? I'm um, 16. You're 16. Yes, sir. And you, how long did you take to build this about two years so you started like we were like 14 late 13 about, 14. yeah about 13 and finished when I was 15 or so man I mean that's pretty that's pretty cool not not many 13 year old kids you know play with toys this big yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what uh, what do we have here we got, uh, model a body yeah it's a 1931 model a sedan shot five inches and channeled about a foot man and what now what she's setting on for a frame uh, we built the frame out of two by four steel really i mean you should, so you must be good with a torch yeah 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 not bad, bad. <laughs> where'd you find the body she's all i mean it's all steel right yeah got it from my uncle and bought it for 450 bucks and didn't have a top or firewall did you we have to create to, all that yeah so what'd you make the top out of it it's a out of a 80 suburban oh no kidding so oh yeah i can almost see that you cut it like so you cut it right here over there and laid it in yes, sir and weld her back on. I also like, you know, I like the uh, weathered finish. How do you create this weathered look? Well, we put three coats of, uh, first we put primer, then yeah. black, then red, then we sand it all down to make it look kind of weathered. And the, and like the, the art on this and the pinstriping, you do that too. Yes, sir. You are a talented boy. <laughs> <laughs> and the engine, uh, you know, a classic flathead. What's that out of? It's uh, out of a 48 Ford. It's got two Strombergs on it. And High compression heads. Wow, really? It's been bored eighth of an inch, as max as it goes. And your your manifold, a Brock Super. I never heard of a Brock yeah. Super. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it started out as Edelbrock, and I went ahead and grind Edel off of it. I thought it'd be pretty neat. Yeah, well, your yeah. your name's Brock, so you, <laughs> you got you got your own monogram. Yeah. And of course, as as all these you know these retro rods, uh, you know, quite a luxurious interior here. It's yeah. <laughs> what are the seats out of? That's kind of cool. Oh, uh, we built the seats. Uh, we rolled them. Aluminum, okay. pop the holes in them. Yeah. And I built the interior on my sewing machine. You just stitched it up, some yeah. some metal flake silver and just whipped it together. And uh, is that an ammo box for a glove compartment? Yeah, it's 50 caliber ammo box. The paint pots, is that, are those your cup holders? Yeah, that's <laughs> the paint I use to stripe. I, I like the look, I mean, you really got it down and you're not sitting on airbags or anything, right? No. Nope. This is where she sits, this is where she yeah. rides. Yeah. Boy, that baby is low. Do you bottom on a lot of this thing? No. I mean, really? not not really too bad. I tell you, Brock, you got a great car. You got a lot of talent. You got a bright future, man. Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for bringing this baby out. Welcome back to my classic car. John, this is a nice Buick. I, I, I saw this coming in. I like green cars anyway, but what a wild looking paint job you got on it. What is this? It's actually a primer. It's a lacquer primer I created 19 years ago for this car. It's just a mint green that I, I picked a color I liked and said, that's going on it. And uh, you were gonna just leave it primer? Or you were gonna actually, you were gonna paint it? And... Well, it went on for one weekend, the 4th of July weekend, 1990, and I was gonna finish up the next weekend. I haven't had a chance to get back to it yet. <laughs> well, you've been busy, you've been I've a busy. Been busy. You know, and it yeah. looks good, it looks yeah. good. Well, you got quite a chop there. Five inches. 
Man, that's, I mean, usually yeah. they, three's the limit. Yeah, five inches. Uh, I had three when I rolled it out. I looked at it, I said, that's not going to work. So I ran it back in, and that other two inches is the toughest two inches I ever took out of any car. <laughs> but it's got the right look. It's When I rolled it back out, I smiled and said, yeah, that's yeah. it. Well, you know, great looking interior. What is that? What's the AC? The AC is an old Fridge King unit that I had that I thought well, it was just period correct. And I put it in, hooked it up to the other stuff that I had in the front with a 67 430 Wildcat. I pulled out of a car, took all that components, put it with it, and it'll it'll make some cold air. It definitely keep you chill down in here. <laughs> but otherwise, you got a Roadmaster uh, dash there. It is, yeah. It's all the '52 Buick stuff, and the seats and door panels, everything were in it when I bought it. It was restored on its way to the Buick Nationals, and I bought it, took it home, took, cut it up, so I just left it huh? in there. It was good enough. How about the skirts? The skirts are one-off set of skirts just for this car. Uh -huh. I built them just for this one. Well, he's yep. really smoothed it out, and that, but that's not a Buick rear window either. No, that's out of a 42 Mercury. This is no trailer queen either, right? Absolutely not. 80,000 miles on the road, 20 wow. years. Just drive it wherever I With go. With this primer? With this primer and no bags. or It's got a set of air shocks for a heavy load of luggage, but it rides where you see it. It sits this low. You, can, you did 80,000 miles with this, this primer and, 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 that, and that road clearance. You bet. Wow. So you're having a good time at the pileup? Having a ball. Always do. One of the best shows of the year. It is, isn't it? It is. It's incredible. Yeah. Well, thanks for bringing this one out, John. No problem, Dennis. Wild you. ride. Rocky, I love your car, man. Thank this, you. Is, this is so cool. I saw, I saw it coming in. I just, man, I got to talk to this guy. <laughs> this is a, what, a 62 Chrysler 300? Yeah, it's a 62 300 Sport two-door hardtop. I think what caught my eyes, I, I just love the paint job. I mean, it's a really, it's a bright, great red, but you got a great satin on it. How'd you do that? What is that? What that actually is, is that's uh, DuPont's. This is a brand new Viper Red, and when I, it's a single stage urethane thing that I actually put a little flattening agent in it, because when I spray base coat, clear coats, this is about the sheen of base coats, and I've always really kind of liked that look, and uh -huh. and I call me lazy or whatever, but it's kind of low maintenance, so I was going to do is sham it <laughs> off and go, and <laughs> call her done. <laughs> and, uh, but, but but you got a lot of you got a lot of flake up top. We do. There, That is a lot of flake that's up on the roof. There's about 10 coats of clear to cover that. It, it's as big as you can get. I mean, it actually, the, the gun that I spray with is actually an undercoating gun it almost looks like it's called a flake buster and you actually <laughs> lay down a layer of clear throw all the flake on it and they actually then you just got a barrier down and wet sand and buff like crazy <laughs> oh it looks it looks great and i mean if the sun did come out i bet that just is about blinded. yeah we probably wouldn't be able to stand here and look at it if the sun was out <laughs> you know a great interior but you, you know this it almost it's it's stock though actually. It, it really is. It's, it's actually this was a, a very nice car to start with. I replaced the headliner and I put a driver's seat bottom, but this is still all the original 1962 interior. I just re vinyl dyed it in the Viper Viper Red just to freshen it up because out west the sun was definitely yeah, strong yeah. and it, it got faded out. But yeah, that's a the Astrodome dash and the push button drive. I mean that's all that's all factory in this. It was custom to begin with. You don't need to you don't it, need to mess it, with exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> why, why mess with perfection? <laughs> yeah, great lines overall. Thank you. you know, yeah. I mean I've always always loved this body style and these these inner integrated tail lights are so cool. Yeah, this is kind of the shaved year. You know, some, some of the Chrysler guys will talk about it because they actually took the fins off of it this year for the first year and rolled the tail lights around them. You know, uh -huh. the, the, quanti the can of quad headlights in front are the same as like the 60, 60 ones, but I think it's a nice clean look. And it, it really is. I mean, you got this drop down pretty far. Are you on airbags? This is actually just like what they call a static drop. This is about as low as we can go. It's actually lowering blocks, uh, crank down torsion bars and drop spindles. We're about riding right on the snubbers. You can't push it much lower, than, but, but it does. It really, for as low as it is on those snubbers, it really still rides like a dream. You know, yeah. Well, so you've been, you know, true to, to old school in the way you've, you've you've even lowered the car. I really do. I, I think, you know, airbags are nice and definitely getting in the driveways and things. It, it's a wonderful thing to go on and have. There's a few times I wish I have, but I like the true old school way of doing it the way they used to do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's, what's under the hood? Let's pop it open. Let's take a peek. Oh yeah, that's nice. <laughs> it's actually a Chrysler 383 uh, with the old Offenhauser speed equipment. We got the old Offy dual quad manifold and the fin aluminum valve covers, and kind of you know ground down the exhaust manifolds and cleaned them up. That's actually a ceramic metallic coat that's uh -huh. on that stuff. I kind of liked it because it sort of matches the the sheen of the valve covers. Yeah, it's and... a little bit flat. Oh man, this is this is a. This is just a great looking 60s custom. This show's got to be heaven for oh, you. Oh, it's awesome. I was up at 2.30 this morning wide awake in bed knowing that, that today can was go, the can day. Go, can can I go, can I go? Exactly. <laughs> Rocky. Thank you. Dynamite car, man. Thank Chrysler you very much. 300. Cool. Thank you. Low and long. That's the way we like them. <laughs> oh, man. The 100 car pileup is not just a car show. It is marginally controlled chaos. This is an awesome show. you got to check this one out. Until our next meeting, remember, honor the timeless classics. I'm Dennis Gage. Happy motoring.